In this video, I'm going to show you how I used Code Crafters to build my own HTTP server in Python and how you can too. So we're given a repository that looks like this and the main file that we'll be editing is app slash main dot pi. Code Crafters gives you a step-by-step -step guide on what to do. But the actual first step after you know installing the repository and all that stuff is to bind to a port. And now in this step, it's very straightforward. We just have to uncomment some code. And so after we do the uncommenting, it looks like this. And we import socket, which is a module that provides socket operations and some related functions. And then we just create the server on the socket, which creates a sock stream bound to our host, which is localhost, and our port 4221. And then we call accept, which makes the socket wait for a client representing a new connection. After that, it's a little more interesting because the second step is to actually accept a TCP connection and respond with HTTP 200 OK. We're still doing the accept, except now we're actually getting the client socket and address and we are receiving some data of size 1024 and then we are decoding that data using utf-8 and then we're simply responding with an http 200 ok again in utf-8 and then we're closing the client socket so let's run our server here and let's do a curl to localhost 4221 which will just do an http get request and there you go. So the server had a connection from 127.0.0.1, which is localhost. This is the address and it received from the client a get request for this path. And here's the host and the user agent. So the next step is to respond with a 404. What if we are looking for a file that's not in the system? We need to respond with a 404. It's like going to google.com slash blah, blah, blah. It's going to give you a 404, right? So, you know, in Code Crafters, it's giving you a little bit more info about what each of these things are. What we need to do is actually parse the path that we're given. So from the message from the client, we get each line, we get the first line, and we get the second word of that line. And that is the path. So now once we have the path, if the path equals slash, we'll simply do what we were doing before and just return OK. Else we'll return 404 not found. Okay, so now let's do our curl. This time we'll pass the dash I parameter, which will actually print out the output that we get. And so we get a 200 OK for slash. So that's all good. Now let's do it again. And this time let's pass in index HTML. And this time we get a 404 not found. OK, so the next step is to respond with content. It's kind of interesting. So if echo is the first part of the path, then we want to echo everything after the following slash. So in this case, we need to echo ABC. And we also need to return content type and content length. And the content length in this case would be three because ABC is three characters. So now it's a little bit more interesting. We have to actually do some parsing of the path. I added a new function here called response. It takes in the path. So if the path is beginning is equal to echo, then we're just gonna get the random string here, return the response like this with the content type, the content length, and the, the string here. Else, we're just gonna return okay if the path is slash. Else, we return 404 not found. I know it's a little bit messy, this code, and I refactor later. Okay, so we have our server running, and now let's do echo slash one, two, three. And there you go. It returned the content type, content length, and of course the one, two, three string back. Okay, the next step is to parse headers. And what they want us to do is actually get the user agent from the request. And the user agent request header is a characteristic string that lets servers and network peers identify the application operating system. So for example, it could have information that, oh, this request came from an iPhone or oh, it came from a Linux system. In this case, it would just be from curl. And what we want to do is actually return that if the path is user agent. From all of the request lines, we just get the user agent here. And we simply check in our response if the path is equal to user agent, then we pass user agent as the new content. And I've refactored out response with content here to make it a little bit cleaner since this is reused. Okay, so if we do user agent like this, we simply get the user agent returned back, which is curl. Okay, so the next step is to make the server be able to take concurrent connections. You'll notice that whenever I was running the curl command to do a get request, it was just immediately terminating the server after because the server would wait for a client, get the connection, serve the response, and then terminate. What we want to do now is to be able to handle multiple concurrent connections. The main idea is to use a loop. So while true, continuously accept 
connections. If it does get a new connection, just create a new thread and use the thread to do the processing. And a thread is the smallest sequence of programmed instructions that can be managed independently by a scheduler. It's kind of like a process, but processes have threads. So when we run the server, the server is the process. Each thread is part of that process, but the process can have many threads running and executed parallelly. We essentially use threads to execute multiple lines of code in parallel. The other code is basically the same thing, although it's been refactored out into this new handle client function. Okay, so now I'm going to do multiple requests and you can actually see that the server is not terminating anymore up top so if i do just a slash it returns http okay if i do asdf it returns not found if i do echo slash asdf it returns this right and now i can iterate more quickly and it's much much better okay so the next step is to returning the contents of a file we're going to add to the program a flag that is used from the command line and this directory flag will specify a directory if they also pass files slash file name, then it will look inside this directory and return the contents of that file. So the way to implement that, first of all, we need to use arg parse. So we get the arg parse parser, we add an argument for a directory and we parse the arguments. And now args.directory will be whatever was passed over here in the command line. And the other thing we need is pathlib. You could also use OS. What we do is if the path is files, then we get the directory slash file name. And if that file exists, we return the content of that. If it doesn't exist, it will default into just doing this 404 here. Okay, so let's run our server and let's pass in the directory of app and we'll do files slash main.py. And there you go. So it returned the contents of our main.py file. And finally, the last task is to host a file. The client will actually be writing to a file onto the server. So again, the server runs in the same way. We just pass the directory, but the difference on the client side is it will be doing a post instead of a get. And what's really nice about Code Crafters is that there are other developers who can comment on this step and give you hints. So this is a great hint here. This is how to test it locally using curl. We need to get the HTTP method. And so again, we just get that from the request lines. And if the method is post, then we get the body and we just pass that HTTP method and body. And now, so if the path is files, we're gonna do a file response. And the file response checks if the method is a post. And if it is a post, it just writes the body to that file path. If it's a get, it checks if that path is there and then responds with that content. Now I'm going to do this curl command, which will write hello world into the file readme.txt at the directory app. Let's see if this works. And now you can see there is a new readme file. So we'll look at this and there you go. It's there and it's got the hello world written. So there you have it. That's how Code Crafters works and that's how to build your own HTTP server. I recommend checking it out. They have some free challenges that you can do if you wanna just try it out and test it. If you're interested, I have a referral link down below. It's in the video description. I'll also post a comment after I publish the video and I'll pin that comment so you can get that referral link that way. I'd really appreciate it if you use the link because it helps this channel out. If you enjoyed the video, give a like and a subscribe and I'll see you next time.